What's up guys? If you watched my previous two videos, I installed GP22 and I also installed um, AppMap with Gabbros Map. Next step is to install Gabbros Velocity Stacks. Now, since my last video, I don't know if you noticed, but I removed the mirrors and I also changed the windscreen with a light tint smoke from racing bike. This took like five minutes to do. Now it looks way better more like a proper race bike so let's not waste any more time let's go ahead uh, with the installation all right obviously the first step is remove the rear seat cowl so we can remove the seat four millimeter two screws under the seat one one two Out. All right, we're gonna remove these two. They're four millimeter hex. All right, next step will be to remove this top. This is a five millimeter, not a four. Five millimeter hex. All right, now that you've removed all three screws, you will have to disconnect all these three connections. I'm gonna start with this one. So for this, the easiest way is to remove it from this clamp over here. Lift this, pull it out. This is off. All right, the middle one here. There is a nut on this side that if you push here, push and then pull, this will come off. And then for this one, there's another nut over there that you have to lift up like this. So if you lift the nut up and you pull this, it's the nut that grabs you over there. Okay, so this is out. All the connections are with these, so we can. Uh, Move to the next step. Next step will be to remove the side panel. I'm gonna use a four millimeter for this. Second one here. I believe there's one more underneath over here. Right there. Over here, also four millimeter. All right. Now we can remove panel, slide back, and it comes off. Now we're gonna do the exact same process for the other side, so we can reach the the fuel hoses. All right, now we have to disconnect the two hoses. One uh, leads to the EVAP canister. We're gonna use your regular um, pliers for this. Just pull it down. There you go. There you go. That's one. Now for the other one, this uses, uh, it's, called, it's called a Click R, I believe, I'm not really sure. Click R type. Um, pliers has an arrow that says towards the right and an arrow here when you flip it that says towards the left. So if I switch it towards the right, you unclip it. Push it here. There you go, and it clamps it. And then to clamp it back again, you switch it and you clamp it from here. Now we're gonna leave it unclamped so we can pull it down. There you go. All right. Okay, so now from the right side, we're gonna lift the tank. Okay, this is the main fuel connection. We're gonna place a rug underneath it just in case we get some uh, leak here. Okay, so you have to lift this yellow clamp up just like that to release it. And then from left and right from the back here, to squeeze it in 
so it's like that so squeeze both and pull it out over there see we do have some leakage there you go not much that's okay oh okay all right so now we should be able to remove the tank let's see Look, tank is removed. Okay, here we have one more fuel connection for the injectors. Same concept, you squeeze from here and from here. Squeeze left and right and pull. There you go, yes, there is a lot of fuel leakage here. Make sure you have a rug with you. Yeah, I'll choose to go with removing the ECU first. I see one, two, three screws here. Gonna need a Phillips head for these. Okay, so we pull this rubber, like a rubber grommets that keep the base of the ECU. Just pull it up. There we go. Okay, so now I'm also gonna remove the airbox. I see uh, nine Phillips head screws around it. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, you're gonna have to unclip the ACU cables here so we can lift this. Okay, so the reason we have to unscrew the ECU is because we need access to these four screws. One here, two, three, and four. Why we need to remove these? Because if we lift the airbox cover underneath, we have the upper uh, stacks that we need to remove. So these need to be removed. These sit exactly underneath the injectors. One, two, three, four injectors. So we need to remove these. To remove these upper stacks, we have to remove these screws. I'm gonna start with this one because it's literally underneath the um, fuel line. You don't really need to remove the, um, the injector. All you need to do is just move it a little bit to the side. Over there, it'll make enough space for you. To remove it. There you go. One. And four. Okay, now if we lift the box, see this just dropped completely. The upper stacks for the first screws will be one, two, three, four, the way it has here. So this comes off. Okay, when you do remove these four screws, uh, the lossy stacks kit comes with these rubber inserts that we have to place here. Okay, these uh, rubber inserts are a bit of a pain to insert. So I figured with this one here that I inserted that you have to press it in and then twist it somehow so press it in and twist okay i found a better way to insert these take the rubber insert place it in here i'm taking a two millimeter hex and i'm just pushing it from here in side just be careful not to puncture it There you go, it's in, there you go. You have to use like a something like, not too sharp, like a two millimeter hex to just pop it in. All right. Okay, to insert these rubber inserts here, it's a bit of a struggle because uh, 
the fuel rail is on top of it so I'm gonna remove it here to make it easier This gives it a little wiggle room for this to be able to move it and insert the rubber. All right, now using a four millimeter extension, I'm gonna remove all stacks. Wow, that was tight. All right, you're gonna start with inserting the pre-existing screws from the stock uh, velocity stacks. You're gonna start by hand screwing this one here. Okay. And also this one over here. You don't have to tie them down is uh, loose because what we need to do is this part here this is stack number two for top left cor corner this has to slide underneath over there and then from above it has the hole here that you can insert your hex four millimeter hex and screw it in we're not going to screw it yet we're just going to insert it underneath do the same for Velocity number four, there you go, same over there. Slide it underneath, there you go. Okay. Okay, once you properly seat them both in, then we're gonna take the other two screws, place them in there. Just hand tight for now, nothing too crazy. All right, once you place these two, then we're gonna go to velocity stack number one. And you're gonna place the screws here, place them here and then push them in in an angle like this over there. I did the same thing for here, leave it this here for now. Take velocity stack number three, insert the screws, going in an angle like this, and there you go. So number three is gonna go here, and number one is gonna go here. But we're gonna start with velocity number one first. When you, so do not go above it, you have to go underneath so you can lift velocity number two while you sit it into the intake. Now let's just make sure that the screws have grabbed down. Don't even tie it, just barely there, so you know that's in. And then last, velocity number three, same thing. There you go. Okay, that's in, and then this one. Okay, so now that they're all properly seated in, now we're gonna go ahead and tie them all. All right, 
See now it's hand tight and you can see how they're all aligned. Once you hand tighten it, so now I'm gonna take the ratchet and make sure they're properly torqued. All right, all right, these are torqued down. Last but not least, I'm gonna remove the air filter and replace it with Sprint filter. You can even see through it, you can tell this will pull more air in. Perfect. All right guys, installation is complete. I would say total about an hour or so it should take you to install everything. Uh, now that we've done everything, we've done GB22, app map, um, velocity stacks, I am going to be removing the servo motor only just to remove weight. Um, there's no reason to be there since it's deactivated, but stay tuned because I'm going to be taking the bike to the dyno and I'm so curious to see what the difference will be on numbers. Uh, 191 horsepower rear wheel stock. I'm really hoping for 200 plus, so let's see. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you. If it did, hit that like button. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.